Here we have solving equations. These are the extra videos and PowerPoints that I put in here for you. And as you go through the homework, you'll see that uh, the videos and PowerPoints are peppered through the problems. OK, and as you also might be able to see from here, well here, this is the set of power. Well, this is this is the PowerPoint that goes with section 1.1, which is what we're in right now. Solving equations, there's the textbook. Um, preview solving and, and some short video, well, not so short videos of how you solve linear equations, solving equations. Now, we have an objective video because topics are called objectives in math. Um, the addition principle of solving an equation, the multiplication principle of solving an equation, and then using those principles together, which of course is what we're going to concentrate on. But let's start with the first problem. Okay. Now, I want to show you something before we work the problem, which is an example of the addition principle. I'm taking a drink of coffee. I have, since yesterday, sounded like a frog. It's very upsetting. Just deal with it. Look down here at the bottom. This is where you have your helps. Well, not all your helps because there are helps sprinkled through these these homework problems. When when are we done? Is it 10:50? I don't think it is. So I am going to go to. It ought to be 1150. But I think it might be 1050. It's 1150. So, 1150? Yes. Really? You're sure? Yes. Yes. 50. Ah, good. OK, we don't need to hurry then. We might even go back to some. Um, 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 well, we don't need to because equations are made up of algebraic expressions. So when we're doing an equation, we're actually working with two algebraic expressions at the same time. But before we deal with that and with the fact that your homework, all your homework has helps built into it, <clears throat> let's take a look at what you will always see or almost always see at the bottom of each individual homework problem, and that is these bolded links. View an example takes you step by step through the homework problem. All you have to do is hit continue. And it shows you over on the right there. Sometimes it shows underneath. What are the steps you should be using? Then it shows you the answer. And I've got hiccups now. Um, continue one more time. And one more time. Hick, hick. Oh, I need to hold my breath for a minute. It is so embarrassing to have hiccups in front of people. Maybe I shouldn't drink coffee, not in front of people. OK, now anyway, that's the way view an example works. It will help you a lot. Now this one has a video. And you're going to solve a problem just like 
this problem, so you could watch the video first. Get more help includes an animation. Let's look at that. This is an animation. Balance is the key. Oh, that's not bad. It explains keeping an equation balanced. So I think you should watch it. It'll help. Um, also, we have when when an apart uh, an apartment when an uh, uh, an assignment is particularly hard, you can always email me directly. Now it says not included because I'm using preview instead of going in as at into edit. But um, yes, you will see it. What ask my instructor does is it sends your question with a link to the problem directly to my email so I can see what your question is and I can read from you what your question is. Meanwhile, textbook. When it comes with a homework problem, takes you to the exact uh, section that your homework problem is in. So this would be in section 1.1. That gives you the ability to look through and you don't have to read it in depth. You don't even have to really understand it, but just to kind of look at how they do stuff. That can help a lot. So you have a lot of helps is what is what this comes down to. You also have skill builder. And it won't open for me because I'm the teacher, but it will open for you. And what it does is it takes you to items in the past that you learned that help you solve this problem. So that's skill builders role. The idea of skill builder is there are things from the past that you did not learn, and that's why you're having trouble with this. All right, now let's continue. Here we have a basic addition principle equation. So I'm going to copy it and put it on my worksheet and do it. Here's my worksheet. Here it is. OK. X plus nine equals 44. Now, first, remember I said you're automatically dealing with two algebraic expressions. Now, yes, we are working with two algebraic expressions. Here, is an algebraic expression, x plus 9. And here is an algebraic expression. A number sitting by itself is called a constant, and it is an algebraic expression in and of itself. We have an algebraic expression equals an algebraic expression, and that is what an equation is. That's how it's different from an algebraic expression. So I'm going to write the word equation. OK. So now I'm going to write it again. X plus 9 equals 44. What? Wait. Forty four. OK. 
That equals sign says that the left hand of the of the equation and the right hand, well, the left hand side, the it's actually called that in math, the left hand side, LHS. And the right hand side, the RHS. Are equal and we have to believe them. I mean, what are you going to do? So, yes, this equals this. Now, if I want to get X by itself, and I do, otherwise I won't be able to find out what X equals, which is always the goal of an equation, then I want to subtract nine because that makes plus nine turn into zero. Plus nine minus nine is zero so that I have X plus zero on the left-hand side. And X plus zero is X. But I have changed it. I decided to come along and subtract nine from this side. When these were equal, now I've subtracted nine from this side, but not from that side. So the sides are no longer equal. That's what that video about balancing equations is all about. I have to keep this equation exactly balanced. But by making sure that whatever I do to the left side, I do to the right side. Now 44 minus 9, you can always put that in your calculator. It's going to be 35. So I have x plus 0 equals 35. Well, x plus 0 is just x. I have x all by itself now, and it equals 35. And this is the addition property of equality. Equality means you're using it in an equation with two sides that at least start off being equal. If you don't make a mistake, they will stay equal. Addition property of Equality. Now you might be asking yourself, I'm sure somebody is. Wait a minute, drink a coffee, gonna try this again. Okay. We'll see what the results are. Notice that what I did here using the addition property of equality is I subtracted. What? This is supposed to be the addition property of equality. So I need to tell you what I really did. I didn't really subtract. Let me write the equation again. In algebra, even though it looks like I subtracted, what I really did is I added the opposite of 9 to both sides. Whenever you add opposites, you get 0. And I want zero over here. So I used the addition property of equality with the opposite of, of nine, which is negative nine. Um, yeah, that'll be 35. Hello there. Yeah, equals. So X equals. 35. 
I just want to point out to you that there's nothing wrong with doing this with a subtraction sign. Nothing wrong at all. I do it with subtraction signs. But I have to remember that it's really not subtraction when I'm trying to tell somebody about the addition property of equality and why subtraction is included with the addition property. Take my word for it. It's kind of weird, but we all know that algebra is a little weird. OK, it's also true that X plus 9 plus negative 9 is the same thing as X plus 9 minus 9. They are the same thing where this plus sign right here has become invisible and now it's over here. Algebra has lots of invisible ones and lots of invisible plus signs. And the reason for that will become evident soon. Not today. Right now, you just have to remember it. Okay, that was a real talky way. Talky, talk, talk, talk. Talky way. Your English teacher would say loquacious way to deal with a simple addition problem. Okay, so let's try to avoid all that talk from now on, at least until we get to the multiplication rule. Let's call up another problem. Now, here is an uglier problem that still uses the addition method. Negative 32 equals X minus 13. Negative 32 equals X minus 13. I need to get X by itself. So it doesn't have minus 13 by it. It just is X. So I have to turn the minus 13 into zero. But whatever I do, I have to do it to both sides. So I know that minus 13 is the same thing as negative 13 and negative, negative 13 plus positive 13 is zero. So this over on the right, will be X plus, let me make the X black. But I don't want to say that X equals negative 32. No, I did not also add 13 to negative 32. See, that could have cooked my you know what right there. If I add 13 over here, I have to add 13 over here. And now when you add a negative and a positive number, it is sometimes almost always easier to use your calculator. So I'm going to negative 32. Wait, let me call up the viewer. Negative 32 plus 13, because I added 13 to both sides, enter, is negative 19. So what that means is I have a negative 19. Oh, I want it black negative 19 over on the left. I have a lonely little X left on the right. X equals negative 19. Using the addition property of equality, 
Here I actually did add something to both sides. Now my hope is, even though most of you could go through this like the wind, that talking about these properties helps to explain a little bit about, well, why it's true. I need to stop and save for a minute. OK, these are my weekly lectures. This is the. C.A.W.R. College Algebra with Review Week 1. Lec. Okay. I definitely do not want to lose everything I've done. I'm sure that's happened to everybody. And then you have to start over again, and it's a super, super, super pain. And I want to yell and scream, which does no good, of course, except it feels good. All right, now where am I? I want to go back to the book, back to the homework, rather. And... We are going to use the multiplication principle. This is a video. It's only eight minutes long. That I would recommend you watch before you do the homework. You don't have to, um, but you will get a point if you use it. Or at least pretend you're looking at it for a few minutes. Oops, I've told you how to sh how to cheat. OK, there are different methods used with the mul multiplication property of equality. So let's get to this. 9x equals 45. I just clicked on the wrong number, the wrong button. Okay, here's what I want. 9x, all right, first I wanna write multiplication Multiplication. Property. Of. Equality. Here's our example problem. Is that 5x or 9x? 9x equals 45. 9 times x, a number we don't know, equals 45. What I need is x equals, x equals has an invisible one in front of it. There's really a one there that stays invisible most of the time. Now, I have to ask myself, how can I go poof? Nine is a one. Well, if I divide both sides by it. Divide by nine, because nine over nine is one. But I have to do the same thing over here. 45 divided by 9 is 5. Notice I said divided by, not multiplied by. Division is part of the multiplication property of equality for the reason I'm, I am about to show you. 1 times x is x equals 5. Now, why the heck is dividing by 9 part of the multiplication property? And here's why. Because back in the Middle Ages, a professor would have flunked a student who dared to divide both sides by nine. The proper way to do it was this. Multiply 
by 1 over 9 multiply by 1 over 9. 1 9 times 9. Let's see what it is. You know what it's going to be, but let's just do it in the calculator and prove that it's true. Clear. Okay, parentheses. 1 divided by 9, parentheses closed, times 9 equals 1. Yeah. Well, we're at it. 45 times parentheses, 1 divided by 9, parentheses. Uh, uh, that's not divided by. Divided by 9. Enter is 5. So this 1 ninth times 9 is 1. 1 times x equals 45 times 1 ninth is 5. So 1 times x is x equals 5. Aren't you glad you don't live in the Middle Ages? But what this shows is that multiplying by 1 ninth, multiplying 9 by 1 ninth gives you the exact same answer as dividing 9 by 9. And 45 times 1 ninth gives you exactly the same answer as dividing 45 by 9. That's why division is part of the multiplication property of equality. So somebody needs to do some research and say, well, who was the first person to use division? in algebra. I don't know. OK, now. See, you've got your helps down here. And before we did this problem, we had a video, so you've got lots and lots of help. And you've got me if you click on get more help. Okay, well, here's negative 15 T equals 30. What I would do is I would just divide by negative 15. Why? Because it's easier than multiplying by one over negative 15, much easier. This, on the other hand, is interesting. What are you doing? You're not what I wanted. Okay, this says solve using the multiplication principle. And it says don't forget to check. But you don't really have to. Of course, if you're taking a test, it's the only way to know for sure whether you're right or wrong. Now we are going to use, we are going to use fine. I'll show you. There. They've had an update. The uh, <clears throat> this is a, a PDF editor. And I've used this for years and it's wonderful. I, I'm madly in love with it. Is that allowed? Can I? 
be in love with a program. I don't know, but I am. It's great. There. Okay. We're going to use, well, what did we just find out? That 1 over 9 times 9 is 1. Well, there's an invisible 1. Let me make this bigger. Because this is one of the more profound things I'm going to say today. Let me get these out of here. There's a one in front of the X, which means that this is really negative one third times X equals nine. You're gonna use this a lot when it comes to slope. Slope of a line, you probably already have used it. If we were talking about the slope of a line, that would be the slope. Actually, it would include the negative. Okay, so what we have here is negative one third multiplied by X equals nine. <coughs> now, what I'm going to do is take the negative one third. Let me make that black. I have a vision in my head for uh, what kind of color coding I want to do. Let's do it here. Negative one. No, I don't want that either. I want. I want, I want, I want negative one third times the reverse of that, the reciprocal, which is negative three over one times X. And that was supposed to be blue. Okay. The reciprocal of negative one third is negative three over one. And since negative three over one is really just negative three, I am also going to take the nine there and multiply it by negative. 3 over 1, which is really negative 3. So I could have picked it up here. Now, when you multiply fractions, you multiply fractions. 1 times 1, uh, that is negative times negative, is positive. 3 times 1 is 3, and 1 times 3 is 3. So I have 3 over 3 times x equals positive 9 times negative 3, which is negative 27. Now I come back to the left. 3 over 3 is 1. 1x. One equals negative 27 and x equals negative 27. This time I did use multiplication. And what I multiplied by was the reciprocal of the of the one third in front of x. And I got the one third from taking the invisible one in front of X and putting it over three.
Now, I believe the next one is another fraction problem. Yes, it is. Look at that. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Solve using the multiplication principle. Okay. Why are you doing this to me? Well, it wants to take a day off, go play in the snow, I guess. OK, fine. I'll just write it myself. Eight-thirds, or eight over three, times x equals negative one-sixth. My strategy is going to be just like the strategy up there. I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the number in front of x. 3 over 8, 3 over 8. Now 3 times 8 over 8 times 3 is going to be 24 over 24. But there's another way to deal with this. And here it is. When you're multiplying two fractions and you have I need to turn off my email so it will stop dinging. Probably regret that. It was probably my boss. Oh, dear. When you multiply a fraction times a fraction, if this number and that number are the same number, they cancel each other out. And if this number and that number, this number and that number, are the same number, they cancel each other out. And when all the numbers cancel, you're left with a 1. So 1x, one doggone it, I was going to make that blue, but I didn't do it. I'm not going back. 1x equals... Now, we can do this a number of ways. It depends on how you want to do it. Really, the way I do it in my head is 6 equals 2 times 3 times 3 over 8. So I have negative 1 sixth times 3 eighths. The threes cancel. And I'm left with 1x. Actually, I could have, I'll get rid of it next time. Equals negative 1 over 2 times 8, which is 16. So x. equals negative 1 16th. Probably that would have been easier. X equals, just keep it together. You could do that too. What the heck? It might or might not be. Let's see. We'll have an experiment here. X equals negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 over 6 times 8 is 48. And then I would get the calculator, turn it on, clear, 
view. Take negative 3 divided by 48. And since it's a fraction, I would click math. And then frac for fraction right up at the top, 1. So I would click 1. And then enter. And I would get this reduces to negative 1 over 16. And you always have to reduce fractions or they're not correct. So this is negative 1 over 16. So you can do this either way. You got the right answer up there. But then doing it this way, you got the right answer if you used your calculator. So something to think of. So let's get into, let's see, this is the multiplication principle. Now we're going to use the principles together. Should I do that? Let's do one easy one, yeah. Eight X minus one equals forty seven. So eight X minus one equals forty seven. I need the eight X term by itself so I can later get the X term by itself. So I'm going to add one and add one negative one or minus one plus one is zero. So I've got eight X plus zero equals 47 plus one is 48. Eight X plus zero is eight X equals 48. Now I have to turn eight into a one. I do that by dividing by eight dividing by eight. Eight turns into a one. Eight over eight turns into a one. And 48 divided by eight turns into a six. So X equals six. Okay. Notice that first I use the addition principle. Then I use the multiplication principle. Almost all the time, there will be an order that you have to follow. Okay. Oh, why did that happen? How totally annoying. Okay. Solving. Uh, solving equations. Right here. Now let's see, we were it, now we're in, using the principles together. Here's problem nine. The next problem, let us go on until we find something more delightfully complicated. Oh, look at that. But I don't want to do that because if you reduce these in the beginning, you'll have all the same denominator and it becomes easier.
Yes, okay. I wanted to get something that is complicated enough. Here we have, this is number 14 in your homework. It won't be exactly the same. Um, it'll use different numbers when you're opening it. Okay, now. Nine Y. Oh, got it. There. Nine Y. Minus parentheses six Y minus thirteen equals. 31. The first thing you always do or almost always do is you clear your parentheses. And you do that by distributing. Okay, remember that that minus sign acts like a negative 1 times positive 6y and negative 1 times minus 13. That's going to give you 9y minus 6y plus 13 equals 31. Now, if you have 9y's and you take away 6y's, you're going to have 3y's. This is called combining like terms. You always combine like terms first after the distribution. So this, I'm going to think to myself, it's a Y term. Nine minus six is three. So three Y plus 13 equals 31. Thir 13 is a constant, so is 31. So I have to get the constants on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 13 and subtract 13. I know that that is zero. Get the calculator. 31 minus 13 is 18. Three Y plus zero is three Y equals 18. I need a one Y, so I'll divide by three but I have to divide by three on the other side. Three over three is one, so I have one Y. One Y equals eighteen divided by three is six. One times Y is Y. Y equals six. So what were my steps? First, I removed the parentheses. Well, let's just say distributed. So first we distributed. Then we combined like terms. Then, I used 
the addition rule of equality with subtraction. So I'm going to say the add rule. So there I'm using the addition rule, doggone it, combine like, wonder if this will go over any further. Little bit, little bit. Okay, like terms. And this now right here, right there this is the addition rule add rule then what that's pretty obvious um then i used the multiplication rule of equality. Now up here, I should say with subtraction. And over here, I should say with division. Barb, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, can you write my problem out and Please tell me where I went wrong on this one. OK, let's meet after class, OK? OK, all right, no problem. And then I got the problem. OK. Now, thinking of it, that might actually be instructive. How do you want to do that? Hello? What? Um, why don't we do that? I decided that would be oh. really instructive. Um, it is 8y. OK, wait a second. 8y. And then I believe it. Well, it's not on my screen anymore, but uh, I just assuming you can get rid of Was the it this one. Um, no, it was 8y minus. 4y minus 16 equals 4. OK, let's do that. Because most of the time when you miss something, it's a little bitty problem, usually either a sign error or an arithmetic error. And then you kick yourself for it. I've kicked myself a lot. OK, first thing I would do is I would distribute that negative sign, which acts like a negative one, to 4y and to minus 16, so that I would have 8y minus 4y plus 16 equals 4. Yeah, I didn't change the signs. That's what I did. Aha. Aha. Okay, gosh. good. Yeah, negative times negative is positive. So let's make a negative times a negative is a plus. So very good. That's a very common error. I appreciate it. OK, now what am I doing? Going here, going here, going here, going here. This one, even worse. There.
No, snipping tool. I didn't want that. I want this. OK. Now. Sometimes I push one little button wrong. And I end up somewhere far away. OK, here we go. Here's one. It's got two sets of parentheses. Seven times parentheses, three X plus nine equals 11 minus X plus three parentheses closed. So there I have seven times parentheses, three X plus nine parentheses closed equals 11 minus parentheses X plus three parentheses closed. Now we've got parentheses on both sides. What we have to do is we have to eliminate the parentheses on both sides of the equation. So seven times three X plus seven times nine. Let's write that down. Seven times three times X is 21 x and then 7 times plus 9 is plus 63 and that equals 11 11 is just sitting there by itself this minus sign in front of the parentheses is acting like a negative 1 we're going to multiply x by it and we're going to multiply, multiply plus three like it. And that will end up giving me minus X minus three. Okay, now I have two. Well, I'm going to analyze each side. This is a variable term, a VT, and that's the number 63 with no variable, so it's a constant term. Now go back up here. I should have done it in that step. This is a constant term. It has no letter with it right next to it. Doesn't have it. So CT, it's a constant term. X is a variable, so it's a variable term. And the minus three has no letter with it, so it's a constant term. We have to get our constant terms together. So 11 minus 3 is 8. That's 11 minus 3. And then I'll have minus x bringing up the end. So I've got 21x plus 63 equals 8 minus X. Now on each side of the equation, please look. I have one, one variable term and one constant term. One, one. Only one of each. On the other side of the equal sign, the right side, I have only one constant term and only one variable term. If I have any more than one of each, I have to combine like terms. Okay. 
So now here's what I have to decide. It's decision point. Am I going to move 21x over there to be with minus x, or am I going to move the minus x over here to be with 21x? And the answer is, since I'm used to seeing variables on the left anyway, I might as well just add x to both sides. So I'm going to add x and add x. That will give me, on the right side, 8 minus x plus x is 0. On the left, 21x plus one more x is going to be 22x. And then I've still got this plus 63 hanging on. And that's what I've got so far. I've got 22x plus 63 equals 8 plus 0. All right, I'm done with the x's. There are no x's over here. No, no x is. <laughs> okay, so. That means I have to get this constant term to be with that constant term. So I'll have 22x plus 63, leave a space, equals 8. And I'm going to use the addition property of equality and subtract 63 and subtract 60. Three. Over on the left, 63 minus 63 is 0. So on the left, I'm going to have 22x plus 0 equals 8 minus 63, and I do not have a clue. So, 8 minus 63, enter, is negative 55. So, I have 22x plus 0 equals negative 55. Well, 22x plus 0 is just 22x. So 22x equals negative 55. I'm almost done, except I do not need a 22 in front of x. I need a 1 in front of x. And since I know that 22 divided by 22 divided by itself is a 1, but that I have to do the same exact thing to both sides. I will have 1x equals negative 55 over 22. And 1 times x is x. So x equals, when you have larger numbers like 55 and 22, you could probably guess that you're going to need to math frac that to reduce that fraction. Or you can do it by hand. But let's just do it in the calculator. I'm going to take negative 55 and divide by 22. And then I'm going to math, rack, enter. 
And when you reduce negative 55 over 22, you get negative 5 over 2. So, let's see why. 11 will go into 55, and 11 will go into 22. This is going to equal negative 5 times 11 over 2 times 11. And the 11s cancel, leaving you with negative 5 over 2. So that's your answer. Most of the time, almost all the time, when you solve an equation and you get an answer, you're going to put the answer only in the answer box. You're not going to put x equals negative 5 over 2. You're going to put, you're going to leave the x equals out of it because it's already there. You're going to, uh, you, all you're going to type in the answer box, you'll have an answer box. It's usually blue. And you're going to type negative 5 over 2. If we put in a decimal, would that be correct as well? Or does it have to be fraction? Well, we have to read what the problem says. This says type an integer or a simplified fraction, which means it will count a decimal wrong. So you have oh. to read, read the instructions that come after or underneath the answer box. Okay. And we are done.